this is a great psalm. And uh, of course, they're all fantastic, right? But I, I'm going to, I've slowed down the, um, the drawing here today because I, I kind of have to take you through the, the chronicles of my mind as I unpack this psalm and uh, th just the pictures and the imagery, the revelation that was revealed to my heart as I was going through it. So I, I started um, dissecting. I started getting those heart pangs on verse 5 reading from the Passion Translation. Out of my deep anguish and pain, I prayed. So the first thing that happens, the first thing that happens is that there is deep anguish and pain. The very first thing we're met with, um, now of course the first thing we're met with is that he gives thanks. But then the first thing that I notice after giving thanks is that we're looked, we, we get a glimpse into what's going on in the life here. And there's great anguish and pain um, we've said it a thousand times that we're not promised a rose garden. We're not promised, um, we're not promised an easy walk ever. We, we are in a very human condition and very human bodies that suffer very human um, diseases, frailties, temptations. So here we find deep anguish and pain. And as a response to that deep anguish and pain, I think it's so imperative that the response is to pray. So out of my deep anguish and pain, I prayed, and God, you helped me as a father. Um, <clears throat> I know this, this term father can sometimes have a lot of implications because sometimes our earthly fathers are, are less than um, we had ever anticipated, ever what we had hoped for. They're, they just fall short. Um, but the father here is this Abba father, the father that loves, the father that lays down his life so that you might live. That's, that's the love of this father here. You loved me like a father. You loved me with an identity. You took me in. You offered me a name, a place, and a kingdom. You loved me as a father. You came to my rescue and broke open the way into a beautiful and broad place. I love the imagery here because I think when we are in pain and anguish, our world gets so transported down to a single focus, and it is just the pain and the anguish. Everything else becomes noise and static. And uh, sometimes we just have to do it to live, to just take the next breath or to take the next step. But this place of where the pain and the anguish is, is everything. It's all, it's all encompassing. When my daughter was walking through a, a terrible, terrible season of medical maladies, and it was just one thing after the other, after the other, after the other, all I could do was catch my breath and keep going. All I could do is come up for air, catch my breath and just keep walking. It was like everything else fell to the wayside and I was just dealing with the next crisis. When we pray, when we open up to God and we say, I'm in pain, I'm in anguish, he takes us and he opens us up into a beautiful, broad place. I don't know if you've ever been in that kind of pain or anguish, but just that thought that that's possible in the midst of, of pain and anguish is, is a beautiful hope that we can lay our hat on. That is a beautiful place that through prayer, through thanksgiving first, through prayer, and, and just coming to the, him as a, as a broken child, that he can open up a broad and beautiful place. I'm going to skip down a little bit now to verse 8. Lord, it is so much better to trust in you to save me than to put my confidence in someone else. I think the thing that I take away from this psalm, one of the important things for me, is that he is the one that battles for me. I do not have to battle. I get to, to put my hand in his and let him do the battling. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip a little bit and I'm going to come down to, oh, I've got to find it. Hold on. Um, I'm sorry. Hold on. Um, it says in verse 15, my loud shouts of victory will echo throughout the land for Yahweh's right hand conquers valiantly. Yahweh's right hand. So think about this. If I am facing my enemy, if I am facing this thing that has brought me great anguish and pain, my, my right hand, my strong hand is in the hand of the Father. All I'm doing with my strength is holding on to the Lord. That's all I have to do. My right hand holds on to him so that his right hand battles. 
if my right hand is not holding on to him, I'm facing the battle on my own. I'm trying to fight my mountains, put my hand in his, and then all of a sudden I am transported to being a child of this, this mighty father that battles for me. I put my hand in his, in his left hand, and he fights for me in victory with his right hand. I love that visual. Um, okay, going back up now to verses 11 and 12. Yes, they surround me like a swarm of killer bees swirling around me. I was trapped like one trapped by a raging fire. I was surrounded with no one, with no way out and at the point of collapse. But by Yahweh's supernatural power, I overcame them all. They pushed me right up to the edge and I was ready to fall. But you helped me to triumph and together we overcame them all. In verse, it tells, tells us the people, the they that surrounded are people that they're hemmed in and surrounded by those that don't love God. So this entire swarm of killer bees are, th- are being surrounded by those that don't love God. And the thing that I'm struck with in this is that a bee can be a honeybee that pollinates and brings beauty and flowers and rebirth to the earth. Or a, honey, or a bee can be a killer bee that stings to kill in a mob and a mass. In our walk, who, what are we? Are we a killer bee or are we a honeybee? Because we, we house the potential of both within us. So for me, this is tied in in this way. The, the jar, the mason jar with the flowers in it is that I have to cut myself off. I cut myself off from all of the things that would drown me, and I offer my life as a living sacrifice to my God. When I can offer myself as a living sacrifice to my God, a living sacrifice that breathes every day, that thinks every day, that has temptation every day, a living sacrifice that has to make a choice every second, every nanosecond of every minute of every day. A living sacrifice means that I can make a different choice in any particular season, any particular point. A living sacrifice to my God. When I sacrifice my day to my God, I don't stop breathing. Even as I'm sacrificing my time to him, my attention to him, my life to him, my path to him, my tomorrow to him, my pain to him, my anguish to him, every time that I I sacrifice something to him, in my very next breath, I can choose otherwise. In my very next breath, I can take it all back. In my very next breath, I can go and meet somebody and begin stinging until death. We house such power in our tongue and on our actions. We house the power to love the world, to pollinate the world with the gospel of good news. We can also pollinate the world with a Christianity that is filled with judgment and hurt. How are we representing this God that we love so much? It's a great question. It's a great question. And I stand before you and say, I have, I have come up short so many times as a representation of our God on earth. Goodness gracious, I, I, a thousand times a day I fail at it. This living sacrifice that has to constantly keep giving and saying, no, Lord, I didn't get that right. I didn't get that right. But he always gives us a second chance and he always allows us to become the honey bee and to lay down the killer bee. We always get another opportunity to go back and love with an unbridled, unselfish, um, live out loud kind of love rather than cut down with words, with actions, and with thoughts. So I really got stuck on that honeybee um, this week. I really did. Um, And the thing is, is that it does say that he will stand beside me. So that was also just as cute as could be, right? (laughs) So that, that always helps. But I really did get stuck on the killer bees. That idea of a killer bee is a swarm. How hard is it to stand against the tide for righteousness? How har- hard is it when there's a mob mentality and everybody's, everybody's joining in and everybody's going against something? How hard is it to stand and say, no, I will choose to love 
because that is a killer bee mentality. And the honeybee mentality is, is just a whole different place in a whole different space. So, okay, so going on, and that's how the two, the printable and the doodle tie in together, that if I am a living sacrifice to my God in every single minute of every single day, I keep on giving myself back to him. Good Lord, let me be a honeybee today. Let me be somebody that um, pollinates and just goes from person to person to person and um, to have an interaction with that person, to take something sweet and pleasing from that person, to leave behind the smell and the fragrance of my God, and then to go on to the next person. Is that not a beautiful visual of what the Christian life should look like? Oh, I love it. So he stands beside me and I get um, to be more like him. So, um, okay, so moving on to Psalm 15. It's also interesting to show you guys that in real time, how long it takes me to do a psalm. Like I know it looks like because it takes all of two minutes for me to do the psalm every week. They take me, um, forget about just designing it and all that kind of stuff. I paint my psalm page usually takes over an hour to paint it every week. So that's just an interesting, I never thought about putting that together for you guys, that it's not a quick process. <laughs> it does take me a skinny minute and I take my time and I get lost in the whole process of creating the visual that he's given me. Okay, so now verse 15, the joyful songs I now sing will be sung again in the hearts of and homes of all your lovers. My loud shouts of victory will echo through the land for Yahweh's right hand conquers valiantly. So again, thanksgiving, prayer, and allow him into my pain and anguish and let his right hand battle for me. If I can be a living sacrifice to my God, then, then let my heart be transformed, God. Let my heart be changed from the killer bee mentality that this world calls us to. And let me be a honeybee in the kingdom of God. That's all I got, guys. Um, I am going to speed it up now so you will see it going a lot faster. And um, I will catch you on Psalm 119 next week. We will not do all of Psalm 119 at once because that would be an incredible undertaking. I don't want to miss one beautiful, glorious word or revelation that he has set out for us. So um, watch the group. Watch over on face Facebook to see how we divide it up. Okay, thanks, guys. Catch you later. Bye. Thank you.